Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from AmandaCrochets.com and in today's video I want to show you how to make this waffle stitch dishcloth. This is a very textured stitch and it looks very complicated but it's actually pretty easy and I feel like once you understand the multiples you can make this bigger or smaller depending on your preference and I also have made this into a blanket and I feel like this is one of the most textured stitches out there and I really like it a lot so here is what the finished dish cloth looks like on the front and then if you flip it over here's what it looks like on the back now the finished dish, dish cloth is 10 by 10 however like I said if you wanted to make it bigger or smaller you can go ahead and do that by just changing up the multiples. So let's get started on today's tutorial on how to make the waffle stitch dishcloth. So for today's dishcloth you will need a size I9 crochet hook. So I'm just using my favorite Clover Moors and this is the I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need one skein of cotton yarn and the cotton yarn I'm using today is this Hobby Lobby I Love This Cotton. However, you can also use the Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton or any other cotton that you have in your stash. So let's begin. So to make this waffle stitch dishcloth, you will need to chain 35 or any multiple of 3 plus 2. That means you will chain a multiple of 3 and then once you are satisfied with your width of your dishcloth, then you will go ahead and add two more chains to the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and chain 35. So you want to start with your slip knot. Okay, so let me see if I can zoom up just a little bit for you. Okay, so to make a chain, you're going to do yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. And that is your first chain. So go ahead and make 35 chains all together. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so once you have your 35 chains, you're going to go ahead and make a double crochet into the third chain from your hook and in each chain across. So to make a double crochet, you're going to do yarn over your hook and that loop on your hook does not count as your first chain. So you're going to count three chains. So one, two, and three. And then in that third chain, you're going to do insert your hook, yarn over, insert back through that chain, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. And that is your double crochet. So just continue making double crochets in each chain across. So again, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So again, just continue making one double crochet in each of the chains across, and I will come back and I will show you how to move on to row two. Okay, so here is what my first row of double crochets looks like. So to continue on to row two, you're going to chain one and turn. So to start row two, you're going to work a double crochet into the very first stitch. So that stitch is going to be right here, and you're just going to work a double crochet into that very first stitch. Next, you're going to work a front post double crochet into that next stitch. So to make a front post double crochet, you're going to do a yarn over, and you're going to find your next stitch, which is going to be right here. And instead of going into the top of that stitch, you're going to work around the post. So that means you're going to insert your hook from right to left underneath that post. So that post should be on top of your crochet hook. 
then you're going to complete your double crochet as normal. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is your front post double crochet. Next, you're going to work one double crochet into the next two stitches. So you're just gonna work on the tops of the stitches. So you're gonna make one double crochet into the next two stitches. So that's one and two. And then this is going to be your repeat. So next you're going to do one front post double crochet in the next and one double crochet into the next two stitches. And you will repeat this across until you have one stitch remaining. So again, to make your front post double crochet, you're going to do yarn over your hook, insert your hook from right to left with that post sitting on top of your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So just continue that all the way across until you have one stitch remaining, like I said. So just take your time with this waffle stitch, and after you do this row and your next row, you will kind of see your pattern forming a little bit. Now in order to see this pattern a little bit better, I recommend using more of a solid color. If you use a variegated color, the stitches will kind of get lost a little bit and you won't really be able to see the effect quite as much. So I highly recommend using a solid color or even a self-striping yarn if there is a self-striping cotton yarn that you have. I don't recommend using a variegated color with all those busy colors together just because you're going to lose that stitch definition a little bit and you won't be able to see the full effect of the waffle stitch. So just continue making your waffle stitch dishcloth for row 2 and I will meet up with you at the end and show you how to continue on to row 3. Okay, so I'm coming up on the end of my row. So for this last stitch right here, I'm going to do a front post double crochet. And then to end your row, you're going to find that chain 2 that you skipped from the beginning and you're going to make a double crochet in the top of that stitch. So count up 2, so 1 and 2, and you're just going to make a double crochet. Okay, And you can kind of see that little waffle stitch definition a little bit here. but it will be more present in the third row. So to make the third row, you're going to chain one and turn. So to start row three of your waffle stitch dishcloth, you're gonna work a double crochet into the very first stitch. So you're gonna do right here, that very first stitch, you're gonna make a double crochet and then in that next stitch, you're also going to make a double crochet. Okay, and in that next stitch right here, which if you flip it over, it's gonna be your two double crochets from your previous row. You're going to make two front post double crochets over these two stitches. And then you're going to start your repeat. So in that next stitch, you're going to do a double crochet. And in the next two stitches, you're going to do a front post double crochet. And then the reason for the front post double crochets is when you work on the one side, the actual waffle side, you're going to need these stitches to kind of be pushed back a little bit. So as you can see, here's that ridge, and then here is kind of like where that waffle is. So it looks like here, here, and here is just making that square. And if you do that front post double crochet in the back, like I said, right here, it kind of puffs out the stitches a little bit, 
it makes it more square and waffle-like. So that's kind of where it gets its name from. Okay, so then you're gonna you're just going to continue. So one double crochet, and in the next two, you're going to make one front post double crochet in each of those stitches. So continue repeating this all the way down until you have two stitches left and I will show you how to finish this row and move on to the next row. Okay, so I'm coming up onto the end and I have two stitches left and in those final two stitches I'm going to make a double crochet. So just like at the beginning you started with two double crochets and you're going to end your row with two double crochets. So this is what your back will look like. So to move on to row four, you're going to chain one and turn. And to repeat this until your waffle stitch dishcloth is as big as you would like, you're just going to repeat rows two and three over and over until you reach your desired length. The only difference is you want to and you want to make sure you end on a row two in order to get that nice edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more row just so you can kind of understand and get the gist of how to make this, and then I will move on and show you how to make the border. So again, you're just going to repeat row two for row four. So you're going to make a double crochet into that very first stitch. And then in that next stitch, you're going to make a front post double crochet. And then in the next two double crochets, you're going to make one double crochet. And then you're just going to repeat from this point on. So front post double crochet, one double crochet in the next two stitches, and then back to one double crochet. So you're just going to repeat this all the way down and see how if you end with a row two row it kind of looks a lot neater than if you were to end on a row like this, which is row three. So always end when you're doing your repeat rows with an even number of rows. And then that way your dishcloth will look nice and neat compared to if you were leaving off on an odd number row. So go ahead and just continue making your dishcloth until it's 10 by 10 and or your desired length and I will show you how to move on to the border. Okay so here is what your waffle stitch dishcloth will look like and again you want to end on an even row so that's why it looks a lot neater. So say you're finished and you want to move on to the border so to move on to the border I just did a simple crochet border single crochet border so you're just going to do chain one and turn your work and you're just going to make one single crochet in each of the stitches across and then when you get to the corner stitches you're going to make three double crochets in that corner so to make a single crochet you're going to insert your hook into that very first stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and that is your single crochet so again yarn over pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And you want to continue this all the way across in each of the stitches and I will show you how to make that corner stitch and then move on to the sides of your waffle stitch dishcloth. So just continue with one single crochet across the top of your dishcloth and I will meet you at the end when I show you how to do the corner of your waffle stitch dishcloth. Okay, so I'm coming up on the corner, so I'm going to make three double, three single crochets in that very same stitch. So that's one, two, and three. 
and this just makes your corner just nice and rounded. So then you're going to turn your work and just work on down the side. And then when you work down the side, you're just going to kind of make your single crochets as even as possible. There's no set amount of single crochets that you need to have. You just want to make sure that your side looks as even as possible. Now if you add too many stitches, your work is going to be a little bit wavy. And if you don't add, add to, if you don't add enough stitches, then your work is going to kind of look a little odd as well. So just kind of take your time and look at your work and kind of just see where you think you would put your next single crochet and kind of just go from there. And like I said, there's no exact science to it. Just try and make your work as evenly as possible and you should be just fine. Okay, so I have one more stitch before the corner. Then when you get to the corner, which is going to be right here, you're again going to do three single crochets all in that corner. So that's one, two, and three. And then you're going to turn your work and you're going to go ahead and just work along the bottom in that same fashion. So go ahead and finish up your dishcloth by making one single crochet in each stitch around and three single crochets in each of the corners. Okay, so I'm coming up in the end and remember you did one single crochet into that corner so to finish you're just going to do two single crochets in that corner to finish up and then you're going to make a slip stitch into that first single crochet. So to make a slip stitch you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that stitch as well as that loop on your hook. Whoops. And that is your slip stitch. So then you're going to leave a tail probably about this length and cut off your yarn and tie in, weave in all of your ends. So depending on how big your skein of cotton yarn is, you're going to, you can probably get maybe two dishcloths out of that. So this is what my sample looks like. And again, if you were to continue making that full dishcloth, here's what it looks like. And again, it's going to be about 10 by 10 but you can always make it bigger or smaller depending on what you like. And this is your starting and this is what your ending row looks like. So if you start with, if you end with that even row like I said, then you kind of get the same effect on the top and the bottom and it makes it look really nice and neat. And again, this is a very textured stitch and I like it because I feel like because it's so textured, it helps scrape some of your dishes a little bit better. So it kind of helps get them a lot cleaner. And I feel like it's very durable. You can just go ahead and throw it in the wash and washer and dryer. And it comes out still looking nice and neat. And you can make these in a variety of different colors and give them away as housewarming gifts or Christmas gifts or anything like that. How cute would it be to have a couple of these dishcloths rolled up and included with a bottle of, a little bottle of dish soap. I think that would be so cute and so nice for a housewarming gift. So thank you so much for joining me today on how to make this textured waffle stitch dishcloth. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, if there's any video that you would like to see me make, please leave me a comment in the comment section below, and I will try my best to get to that video for you. Alright everyone, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye!